In the world of little nightmares, countless children have dreamt themselves into the nowhere <coughs> only to slip beyond the veil, never to wake again. Through twisted corridors, spiraling cities, and beneath dark oceans, these lost souls have wandered, their innocence shattered by unspeakable horrors. But do we truly understand what it's like to stand in their shoes? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and in this video, I will retell the inevitable fate of every little nightmare's child. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Let's begin with our first child, Alone. A girl with pigtails and a lime-colored suit, her frequent nosebleeds hidden beneath a raised collar. She is determined to escape the spiral with her friend Lo. Though quiet like many others, her compassion for Lo sets her apart. Lo, a thin boy wearing a white raven mask, has been trapped in the spiral for years, yet he clings to the hope of finding a mystical gateway. Together, they navigate the nowhere, crossing through mirrors in search of freedom. With Lo by her side, Alone has never truly felt alone. However, in the world of little nightmares, children often become what they fear. If Lo meets his end during their escape, Will Alone live up to her name? Could she become the pigtail girl from the comics? A fate she seems destined for. After losing Lo, Alone may find herself trapped in a hospital, captured by the doctor. In captivity, her one short pigtails grow into long tangled braids, a testament to her time as his prisoner. Her blood-soaked nightgown is a constant reminder of her worsening nosebleeds. The doctor pushes her towards madness, sliding a spoon into her cell and compelling her to dig. Each time the spoon breaks, he replaces it with a fresh one, while alone keeps count, each spoon marking another day in her nightmare. Finally, she digs deep enough to break through, but instead of freedom, she emerges in another cell. When the door creaks open, hope glimmers in her eyes, but standing in the doorway is the doctor, ready to crush that hope once again. Now let's turn to the children in very little nightmares who reside in the nest, a towering narrow mansion precariously perched on a rocky cliff above the ocean. Among them is Raincoat Girl, a determined child with a long brown braid who uses her wits to solve puzzles and uncover her enemies' weaknesses in her quest for freedom. Along the way, she shows compassion to another child, presumed to be Six, by saving her from a deadly fall. In return, Six incapacitates the Pretender, but not before the Pretender brings Raincoat Girl's story to a tragic end. Whether Six took the yellow raincoat to carry on Raincoat Girl's legacy, or felt a powerful connection to it remains a mystery. If that connection is strong, it raises the intriguing possibility that Six could be Otto's sister Cece. Cece willingly accepted her fate in the nowhere, having been taken across the threshold by the ferryman, and her ultimate fate remains unknown. Six, with her messy black bob haircut, is purposefully tight-lipped about her past, suggesting she belonged to a different world. Armed only with a Zippo lighter, she navigates the maw facing her greatest obstacle, an insatiable hunger that drives her to seek out fresher food. The day the thin man kidnapped her marked the birth of her dark counterpart, Shadow Six, who ultimately lured her into the maw's clutches. In the maw, Six encounters the bread boy, who offers her his last piece of bread and encourages her to share her memories, urging, if you don't tell us, you're sure to forget altogether. Together. His words highlight the importance of holding on to the little things as you lose yourself in the maw. In very little nightmares, the red scarf boy is freed by the raincoat girl, but he quickly pushes her aside and runs away. Unfortunately, he eventually falls into the clutches of the craftsman, leading to theories that he becomes one of the dolls for the pretender's twisted amusement. The pretender is a spoiled rich girl whose violent tendencies often erupt into screams of rage. With smeared red lipstick and elegantly styled white hair, she is obsessed with her dolls, maintaining strict control over their arrangement. Any deviation from her meticulous setup triggers explosive meltdowns, vividly illustrated when she tears the red scarf boy 
destroy in two, only to collapse in tears over the remnants. In Little Nightmares 2, we meet Mono, a determined child clad in a trench coat with a paper bag over his head. He embodies tenacity, resolutely pursuing his goals while fiercely protecting his friend Six from any threats. Like Lo, Mono has the supernatural ability to travel through televisions. However, his friendship with Six is tragically short-lived by the betrayal, leading Mono to become the villain of his own story. The Thin Man, who controls Pale City through sinister television signals. Ma, pick me up, I'm scared. Theories suggest that Mono was either destined to become the Thin Man or chosen as his successor. Meanwhile, in the Sounds of Nightmares podcast, we meet Noon, or No One, whose real name is Ruth. She endured a troubled life marked by loneliness and ridicule, earning the cruel nickname No One. Her struggles escalated when she became a primary subject for treatment of a dangerous waterborne illness. After her recovery, she gained fame and respect from her classmates, but deep down, she sensed something was wrong with her body. Like Cece, Noon began experiencing terrifying nightmares and was eventually admitted to the county psychiatric institute under the care of a counselor named Otto. After the ferryman transported her across the threshold, another patient named Ethan sleepwalked into Otto's office, presenting an opportunity for Otto to turn him into a test subject in his quest to uncover a path to the nowhere to find his missing sister. In one of Noon's dreams, she encounters a young boy in the bathhouse known as the Jester. He delights in telling jokes but often forgets the punchline, suggesting a loss of his identity. The Jester joins Noon, asking if she knows a way out of the bathhouse. While she manages to escape from the bathers, the Jester is not as fortunate, ultimately meeting his fate as a sponge for the oversized adults. While crawling within the stone giant, Noon encounters a child with gooey hair, their head cloaked in a black smoke-like liquid. The child directs her to a room where a tall woman in a nun's dress, likely the lady, is working. Although the child helps Noon escape, they ultimately fall victim to the lady, suggesting they might be one of the shadow children from Secrets of the Maw. Their misty forms and pale faces mirror those of the gooey-haired child, leading to the theory that these children had their souls taken and were being repurposed as her guards. <laughs> In another one of Noon's dreams, she finds herself at the carnival, where a group of teenage performers entertains a crowd of disfigured humanoids under a tent. Among them is Rusty, a boy who pleads with Noon for help, escaping the man in the purple suit during a pivotal moment of the show. As the man forces the children to perform, he sends his puppet after Rusty, just as the opportunity for escape arises, thwarting the boy's chance at freedom. Speaking of secrets of the Maw, let's not forget the runaway kid with his emo hairstyle and blue pajama button downs. Always ready to defend himself and help others, he shows his bravery during his encounter with the gnomes. However, he is eventually captured by the lady, who transforms him into a gnome, subjecting him to a horrific fate in the guest area. After finding a leftover sausage, the gnomes are floppy cone-shaped creatures that scuttle quickly across the nowhere and communicate in croaks, but they were once children. In addition to the runaway kid, we meet Flashlight Girl, a scrappy child armed with a flashlight who desperately tries to escape the maw. When she opens a vent and falls through, she vanishes without a trace, leaving only her flashlight behind. The only evidence of her presence is a trail of black goo and a child's handprint hinting at a dark fate that may have befallen her. Beyond the children in the games, let's explore those within the comics. One notable character is the Lollipop Boy, who battles the bully from Little Nightmares 2. While crying and wielding a large lollipop, he smashes their porcelain heads and tosses them off rooftops. When he hears the heavy footsteps of a larger presence, he hides in the locker, only to meet a grim fate at the hands of the teacher. The bullies are scrawny troublemakers dressed in 1950s school outfits, their porcelain heads concealing their malicious intent, with only the teacher with the authority to set them straight. Another intriguing character is the 
ghost child who has pale skin and a white sheet draped over their head. This child scavenges for food in a dilapidated apartment in Pale City, with two viewers fixated on a TV in the background. The ghost child discovers a blood trail leading from a cage to a nearby wardrobe, where they find an injured rat. Attempting to save it, they carry the rat to a window, but realize it's too high. Tragically, the rat succumbs to its wounds. The television falls silent, and the viewers back the child to the window, leaving them with a choice between a long fall or a slow death. Finally, there's the toddler, a character clad in a cloth diaper and a blindfold, wielding a vermilion. He stores meat in his knapsack, hidden in a burrow, but as he climbs out, several claws drag him back underground. Awakening from what he believes is a dream, his curiosity compels him to follow a shriek to the outhouse. Suddenly, one of the televisions behind him flickers to life, drawing his attention, only for him to be captured by the thin man. After sneaking out of the kitchen, Six encounters five hooded children around a campfire, the bandaged kid, the boy in green, the refugee boy, the long-haired girl, and the humpback girl. Tragically, the bandaged kid is devoured by a leech almost immediately. The humpback girl shares her harrowing story of entering a room filled with mirrors in the dilapidated house alongside her friends. The mirrors distorted their appearances, one became muscular, another tall, and a third discovered a twin. Yet the humpback girl refused to look. As tentacles emerged from the mirrors, she distracted the creature while her friends smashed the glass, defeating it but disfiguring her in the process. Abandoned by her friends, she accepted the ferryman's invitation to cross into the nowhere, ultimately fulfilling her fate as the humpback girl. The children in the nowhere have endured terrible, torturous lives, devoid of loving and compassionate adults to protect them. After suffering enough pain, the ferryman offers his hand presenting them with the choice to leave their world behind for another, but would their lives truly be better in this new realm? Is the ferryman's act of helping children cross the threshold a gesture of compassion or a form of malice? That remains open to debate. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe for more content like this, like the video, and comment your thoughts on the stories of these Little Nightmares children. Whose story did you like the most, and whose story would you want to live? Thank you for watching, and that's all. Thank you.